Welcome back. Let's have a look at Putin's legacy within Russia. He's overseen some important crises in the last eight years. When he took power in 1999, ahead of his actual election, Putin was inheriting a Russian economy crippled by neglect and mismanagement. Well, he's managed to achieve steady, some would say impressive economic growth in the face of rampant corruption and crime. After Putin sent troops into Chechnya, Russia was rocked by violent attacks. At least 200 people killed in the Moscow Opera House in, autumn, in the autumn of 2002. And then came the infamous incident at a Beslan school in 2004, where hundreds of children were killed during a siege. However, lack of press freedom helps to keep the Kremlin's bad news from the public eye. And secrecy is one of the main allegations made against Putin. Opinions, of course, are divided over Putin, a figure as controversial as he is powerful. Putin remarked on Monday, as we said earlier, that it would be quite realistic for him to become prime minister after his tenure as president. Well, the reactions were wide-ranging and came from across the world. But it seems the world simply cannot make up its mind about this man. Russia's perceived resurgence is causing considerable angst amongst some of its neighbors, in particular Moscow's accused of employing strong-arm tactics to project Russian power abroad. Militarily, the country is getting stronger, with Putin personally overseeing modernization of the armed forces. The Finnish defense minister recently expressed his concern, identifying Russia as the greatest security challenge to his country. Well, Norway and Georgia, too, have protested at numerous Russian air incursions over their territory in the last few months. Russia's track record at the United Nations has also been criticized. Moscow has been accused of shielding countries said to be responsible for human rights violations. Well, it's also been criticized for assisting Iran's nuclear program. Well, joining us once again, let's welcome our guest in Moscow, Alexander Pikayev, the deputy head of the Committee of Scientists for Global Security. Also in Moscow, Pavel Falganauer, he's a political analyst and columnist at the Novaya Gazeta. And in London, Mark Hollingsworth, a journalist and author. Thank you for joining us. Let's once again start with Mr. Pikayev. How would Putin becoming prime minister if that does turn out to be the case, or even the idea of that, how is that going to impact relations with Europe, the idea of bringing Russia closer to the Europeans? Uh, well, uh, the problem is not who is in power in Russia. The problem is uh, what uh, place uh, the West is ready to provide for the Russians. Uh, and so far, the Russians were not very happy on the attitude uh, how the West created their country. Uh, and uh, here there is a very strong consensus that Russia should, uh, uh, should struggle for a strong position in the world. Russia is uh, slowly but uh, steadily back on track. And uh, the Russian people, Russian political class, uh, want uh, uh, from the new president that it could uh, continue a strong uh, foreign and security policy, which was held by Mr. Putin during the last uh, uh, couple of years. But so it, that sorry, for the West, but uh, isn't I, it true that Putin is then perhaps the man who has championed that cause? And if you had someone else in the presidency, you might not necessarily have a, simpler, uh, a similar championing of that cause. Well, uh, actually, it is not important who is the president. What is important, what are expectations here about presidential foreign policy? Russia is not a dictatorship. R Russia is, albeit, uh, uh, not very uh, brilliant, but a democracy. And the president should take into account position of Russian voters. So that for the West, uh, I would say that uh, on the one hand, uh, nomination of Mr. Putin, possible nomination of Mr. Putin as a prime minister, would uh, guarantee continuity of Russian po foreign policy, although w the West uh, might uh, not like some of its elements, uh, but the transition would be uh, predictable. On the other hand, uh, the figure of the new president, and it is a Russian president who is in charge in uh, the Russian foreign policy uh, under the uh, Russian law. Uh, therefore, there might be some, uh, some changes in style, so to speak, uh, uh, and uh, the style of foreign policy might be a bit different from what it was uh, this year and last year. But however, I think that in general terms, uh, the major elements of Russian foreign and security policy would remain the same, and uh, this is uh, uh, simultaneously good and bad uh, news for the West, maybe. All right, uh, Mr. Falgana, would you agree with that analysis that it doesn't really matter whether Mr. Putin is the president or who is the president or who is prime minister, given what we, we've been hearing repeated 
criticisms from people like the U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice saying that they're concerned about the concentration of power under the reign of Putin. Would any of that, that tense relationship with the U.S. Uh, change, for the better or for the worse? Well, of course, the West is going to talk to Russia no matter what. I mean, uh, they talk to Joseph Stalin and to uh, Leonid Brezhnev and the leaders of the Communist Party, because Russia is a very important player in the world scene. Uh, if Putin right now stays as, say, as prime minister, that will, of course, create p uh, problems. Uh, first of all, tactical. Who to invite, say, to summits, to the G8, to other summits? Uh, the uh, Putin, the prime minister, or a substitute consort uh, uh, president? That's, uh, well, that's, of course, just a tactical problem. There are other problems. Uh, Russia is clearly moving away uh, from the West in its style of its political life. It's becoming a kind of... Asian country, something like, you know, Suharta's Indonesia, where Suharta uh, ruled for 24 years, something like that. Uh, I mean, again, the West can work with such a country, but it's moving away. That's not very good. There can be even more problems because it's obvious if Putin perpetually stays in power, uh, that means there'll be stagnation in Russia. There'll be no reforms. Actually, his first term began with a number of very important reforms. Most of them failed. His second term, there was no reform. Now he's going to be mostly uh, gra thinking about holding power and grabbing power. And uh, no reforms means that Russia is an uh, unstable, basically, country and a very big neighbor and a dangerous neighbor. So there'll be problems for the West, sure. All right, Mark Hollingsworth in London, uh, with that, bearing that in mind, reforms that have failed. Uh, is Russia really the big giant that we sometimes uh, uh, hear about? I mean, the U.S. State Department often talks about it as trying to threaten and humiliate U.S. interests abroad. We have the Finnish defense minister talking about it as the biggest three threats to his country's uh, security. But looking internally, is it really such a, you know, a strong power? Well, I think it is because of its uh, resources and its wealth. You have to remember that um, there's no, they've paid off the debt, the government national debt. It's a hugely uh, wealthy, prosperous economy. And I think the, uh, Mr. Putin and the government will use that as a basis for its foreign policy in terms of energy security and making Russia uh, having a non-aligned foreign policy where they're neither, neither pro-West pro-Europe and will take foreign policy decisions on the basis of its merits rather than being part of a, uh, an established camp. And I think uh, my understanding is that Mr. Putin is very distrustful, uh, particularly of the United Kingdom and the US and, 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 and sees uh, policy pronouncements by the West as a sort of way of trying to Americanize or Westernize the Russian uh, government and, and Russia in itself. And they basically, and, and I think uh, they now, with the with the economic prosperity, are able to impose, um, be a, have an independent foreign policy. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Perhaps, the, though, the point that critics would make, Mark, is that the power of Russia may be simply the power, uh, as long as as oil and energy prices remain high. When you look at GDP, it's still doing uh, worse off than than it was in 1989 under the Soviet Union. The population is shrinking. Uh, hasn't compensated for the loss of industrial and agricultural hubs such as the Ukraine. Does it really have much muscle uh, other than high energy prices? Well, I think while while those natural resources are there and while high oil prices are are continuing to to be at this level, then I think they have that as a as as their as their leverage. And I think uh, it seems to me that. Uh, Mr. Putin is trying to uh, make Russia a more coherent, uh, non-aligned, independent nation, uh, more nationalistic, uh, I would say. And um, I think that's really part of, is, is a main part of his foreign policy, and that I don't think he's necessarily going to go out and impose uh, his will in, in other countries. But I think he, I think he wants to be, uh, have a policy that is, that is, um, good for Russia rather than uh, part of any kind of huge international uh, alliance. All right, uh, we are running out of uh, time, so we'll have to thank uh, our guests in London, Mark Hollingsworth, he's a journalist and author. In Moscow, Alexander Pikayev, the deputy head of the Committee of Scientists for Global Security. Security. And also in Moscow, Pavel Felgenhauer, a political analyst and columnist at the Novaya Gazeta. Thank you all for joining us.
And thank you, the viewers, so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. As always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Feel free to email them to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. That's InsideStory at aljazeera.net. For now, from us here on the Inside Story team, it's goodbye. <laughs>